Hey everyone, for those who have never met me, I'm Mingus. Um, I'm a technical community manager here. And today I'm gonna be showing y'all a bit of a way to do a, a face zoom on um, Effect House. It's a, a bit visual scripting heavy, but I will try to go slow and answer as many questions as possible at the end if I lose some of you. Um, yeah, let's dive in. Again, as Miles said, ask questions that we go. I will get to all the questions at the end. So if I don't get to them right when you post them, don't worry. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now and let's see how that goes. Can you all see me? Um, check in the chat for a yes. All yes. right, thank you, Greg, thank you, Alexa. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So as you can see, I've got a bit of a face tracker going on here. Um, let's pop this out. And how we've done that is using a bunch of visual scripting nodes and then just a few objects up here. So I'll walk you through it and then I'll try and break it down a little bit. Um, with these live demos, it's always easier to start with things assembled. So as you can see up here, we have a canvas. On that canvas, we've got our face sticker and we have an image. So to add a face sticker, face effects, face sticker. Um, and if I hide these, you'll see, this is what a face sticker does. So it's gonna attach a 2D object to your face. Um, and although it looks like it's in 3D space, it's actually living within a canvas on the screen. Um, so it's just tracking the face in 2D. And then as you can see here, based on the rotation type, it's gonna stretch it and skew it to kind of look like it's rotating. Um, you can always change it to device and then it's gonna stay a square and it's gonna stay parallel to the camera the whole time. Um, so that's face sticker. It's a nice way if you want to track the face using 2D coordinates as opposed to 3D coordinates. So of course, another way to track the face would be to use our head tracker which is in AR tracking and then head tracker. Um, and you can always pull the position from up here. For this one, because we're working 2D, I'm just gonna use the face sticker. Um, so I will delete that because we made our face sticker here. And then this is actually what I'm using to track. So I pulled the face sticker position down here. So to do that position, get position, and that's going to then give me the position of the middle of the face sticker on our 2D canvas. Then what I've done is I've added another image in the canvas, um, and that's what you're seeing the zoom on. So let me break that down for you here. Let's try to just start that. So I've added another image. And then to that image, I've applied the camera texture. Boom, now you can't see that very well right now because it's just showing you the exact size of the screen. But if I scale it down a little bit, you'll see what's happening there. So this image here is actually the camera texture. And then it is using the inverse tracking of the face sticker to keep the face centered. So let's break this down. I'm gonna try to make this from scratch for you all right now to make it easier and then if something goes awry, I'll jump back to this file. Here we go. Okay. So, 2D, face effects, add the sticker. That's how we're getting our 2D tracking. I'm going to pull the position from it. So this, if I take a peek at it, as you can see, it's giving me the coordinates of the middle of my face in 2D on the canvas. Um, and then I'm going to add the image. Oop. That's not tracking anything at the moment. And to that image, I'm going to add the camera texture. So you can click into texture here, add our camera texture. Sometimes if it doesn't update, you just got to refresh. You can't see it right now again because it is the full screen, but there is another texture here in front of the camera feed. Um, now what we want that to do, if I just track this 
camera texture to the face here. I'll show you. If I get the position, I set the position and I follow it to the face sticker. Here, let me hide the face sticker. You'll see that it's currently following my face, which is cool. And this is an effect in itself, but it's actually doubling the distance that my face goes. So as my face is moving right, then also the image is gonna move right. And it's doing actually the opposite of what I wanna do for this effect, which is keep my face centered. So I actually need to flip it. So I need to make it do, I need to make this image do the opposite of what my face is doing. Um, kind of like a, a face stabilization camera. So in order to do that, I'm actually just going to multiply the sticker dimensions or coordinates by negative one and negative one. I don't need this peak anymore. And now you will see as my face goes left, the image goes right, as my face goes right, the image goes left, as my face goes down, the image goes up and et cetera. Um, so already, you know, we've got, uh, uh, just with these four nodes, we've got a bit of face stabilization going on. This is cool. What we don't have is, um, we haven't enlarged it. Um, so to do that, we can set the scale of our image which is this one right here. So we have the scale 2D, we can set that. Um, and you can, this is totally up to discretion. You can scale it to whatever size you want. Um, I'm gonna pull this update node through position into the scale 2D. So it's constantly updating as well, but you will see as I update it, now it's zoomed in. The problem is our zoom doesn't match with the position scale right now. So when you're, if you're replicating this, make sure that your scale settings, so two in this case, are the same as this multiplication number. Um, okay, now we've got a zoom and we've got some face tracking. So that's cool. Um, it's a little, it's getting a little bit like the, the TikTok one we all know and love. Um, you could be done here. This is five nodes, it's two objects, it's simple to the point, and it's giving you already a pretty cool face zoom. Now for our more advanced users, if you wanted to get a little bit fancier with it, how the one already uploaded to TikTok works is when it recognizes a face, it's going to then zoom. So when your face is off screen and then it comes on screen, right now I'm just, see, you can see it's just jumping back in. Um, that's not so elegant. So if we wanted it to zoom when a face is recognized, let's try to do that. Cross your fingers. Um, we can do a face detection node. So what a face detection node does is it's gonna tell you when a face is detected and it's gonna tell you how many faces are on the screen. So in our case, I want it to be when there is one face on the screen, so when the face count equals one, we don't need a tolerance for this because it will exactly equal one. Then if that happens, we will want our scaling to happen. So in order to do that, stay is gonna tell you, stay will send out a continuous um, pulse as long as there's a face on the screen. Um, begin will work when a face comes from off screen onto screen, but it won't work right at the beginning of the effect. So that's why I'm gonna use stay for this. Um, and then I will plug stay into if. The problem with that is I only want a single pulse here. So I'm actually going to do a do once and then plug that in. So to break that down, what this is saying is when a face is on screen, this will send out a continuous pulse. This is gonna make it so it only actually sends out one because we only need one for the if node. And then if it equals one, true will trigger something. And what true will trigger is our little transition. Um, so I'm gonna add a transit by time. Cool. 
transit by time is going to change some values, whatever you set up here, from this number to this number over this amount of time. Um, so when the face is detected, we will start this node. We will make it go from zero to one over one second. Okay, that's looking good. So right now what's happening is face detected, trigger this. This is gonna output a number from zero slowly to one over one second. And then we will feed that, if I remember correctly, into what's called a lerp. Um, that's a bit of a more complex node. Um, what a lerp does is you can input a start value, you can input an end value, and then the step value is how far between those values you want to be. So if this is zero and this is one and this is 0.5, this will shoot out 0.5 um, because it's halfway between zero and one. If I change this to two, it's halfway between zero and two, it will shoot at one. How people like to use this is they take the output and then they will feed that into the start value. So it will slowly creep towards the stop value. So people use it, you can use it similarly to transit by time, but people use it for smoothing. Um, people use it for, yeah, like if you wanted to, have my face move and then you wanted the image to actually take a little more time to catch up with the face which i will show you later we would use this for this case we're going to use it a little unconventionally and i am going to feed this value into the step um so this step is going to go from zero to one i'm going to make this a vector two i will explain this in a little more detail in a second and then the stop value is my current face value. Okay, looking good, feeling fine. Um, let's see if this works. Okay, it's working. So let me remove the scale for a sec. And let me make this one one because we removed the scale. Okay, so you all see what's happening there. Once I start the effect, it's going to move the image from zero zero, so in the center of the frame, and then it's going to slowly creep towards my current face position. So if I refresh it, or if I refresh it, Cool, so it's just a way to start the effect with it not just kind of starting like this with kind of an edge on it, but it will slowly creep towards me. So to break that down, um, when there is one face on the screen, make this transit by time, shoot out the value from zero to one over one second. We feed that into the step of alert node, and that means it's gonna slowly move from zero, zero, to our current inverse face position. Um, I see there's some questions. I promise I'll get to them all at the end. Um, I know this is a bit, a bit complex, so we'll break it down more in the end. Um, last thing I wanna do, I think, is bring this scale back, but also have the scale go from one up until our two when the effect starts. So I'm going to use another transit by time. Um, I want this if here to trigger both of these. So I have to break it up into two pulses using a sequence. So pretty much what a sequence does is it's just going to take this pulse and then it's going to say, do the top one first, do the second one right after, and do the third one right after that. Um, boom. And then we will scale it from one, one, two, let's do three, three. Let's see if this works. And then this needs to match the three now. All right. Okay, we're big. Um, so now, I just have it zooming at the beginning as well. 
Um, cool, looking good. Um, last thing I want to do, if we want to make it a little more fancy even, um, is we can add another alert here. And remember when I was talking how people more conventionally use it, that's what we're gonna do with this LERP. So that's just gonna smooth how the image actually tracks the face. So if you feed in this position as the stop, and then we feed a get position into the star, let's see if this works. And then we make this point one. You see now how as I move the face, it slowly is gonna catch up with my face and I can change this to say 0.5. And now it will catch up a little quicker. Um, that's just a way if you wanna make it a little more elegant so it doesn't, so it just follows your face a little more smoothly um, and gives you a little more bounce. Um, so yeah, to clarify what that's doing is it was taking the position we were using as the stop value and that's gonna feed into the position value. But then we're bringing that position value back into the start value. So as this value increases, our start value will increase as well. And it's always gonna be halfway between our start value and our start value, but um, our start value is slowly getting closer and closer to our stop value. So 0.5 between them is slowly gonna get closer and closer. Um, we have a LERP document that we are working on that will make this all a lot clearer that I can share after. Um, yeah, I think it's a little messy as I just made it quickly, but I'm gonna, I think that's, that's good for now. I think a challenge that if you would like to take this one step further that our, um, our effect on TikTok has is, as you can see, when I move too far, we get this, this kind of break that that kind of kills the illusion of the face zoom. You start to see me behind it. Um, and if you really wanted to make this fancy, you could detect when the face is at a point where it will reveal the edge of the zoomed in image. You could then do kind of the reverse of what we've done here and try to make it so it zooms back down and it goes back to a zero zero position. So whenever the face goes here, that image will get back. So you would never see the edge of it. Um, that, that is a challenge for all of you to add that to this.